Hello and welcome to Upfront. I'm Song se -ryang. Maritime disputes in the South China Sea have been ex escalating, and Korea is by no means a bystander to such disputes. Meanwhile, Korea and China are about to hold a negotiation on exclusive economic zones. On this week's Upfront, we discuss the ongoing maritime disputes within the international community. On November 4th, a meeting of the defense ministers of 18 nations was held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Participants included the 10 Asian countries as well as Korea, China, Japan, and the U.S. Discussions were held regarding maritime boundaries in the South China Sea, but the ministers failed to reach an agreement. Not even a joint statement was adopted. Also on November 24th, the Permanent Court of Arbitration opened the first round of proceedings instituted by the Philippines against China regarding the disputes in the South China Sea. Disputes over the South China Sea have risen as one of the biggest ongoing international conflicts not only for China or Southeast Asia, but also within the entire Asian region. The South China Sea is a sea area surrounded by China and Southeast Asian countries like the Philippines and Malaysia. There are four different groups of islands within the area. It covers a sea area of 3.5 million square kilometers rich in fishery resources as well as natural resources like oil and gas. Along with this high economic value, it is also one of the most important checkpoints for maritime transit. As the area stretches from the Singapore Strait to the Taiwan Strait, over half of the world's total maritime transportation volume passes through the South China Sea. Several countries have laid claims to the area based on different historical documents as well as the international law. China has reclaimed seven reefs within the South China Sea and constructed artificial islands, which include landing strips and harbors. Neighboring countries have strongly condemned China's moves, pointing to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which denies sovereignty over the reefs below sea level. This is also an issue of competition for regional hegemony between U.S. and China. The U.S. Navy has been conducting freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea to contest Chinese claims. Tensions are escalating in the South China Sea. Upfront discusses international conflicts over maritime control and possible solutions. To help us navigate this uh, very sensitive issue, we have a, a great panel of guests here in the studio. Uh, we have uh, Park Han Il, president of Korean uh, Maritime and Ocean University. Yes. Park Hui uh, dean of Graduate School of Politics and Leadership in Kumin University. And Shin Chang Hun, Research Fellow of the Center for Global Governance at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. Thank you very much. And lastly, we are joined by uh, Park Chang Wan, a Senior Research Fellow at the Center for Security and Strategic Studies in KIDA, uh, which stands for uh, Korean Institute for Defense Analysis. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Now, this issue is very interesting. It involves international law, it's, it involves history, and also very a sensitive issue of who takes the control in this region uh, among uh, superpowers. Now, we'll, we'll start with President Park uh, Tell us about the significance of uh, this region. Now, we're seeing the map of the region in the background, and uh, as we uh, heard from the news, that the U.S. is very sensitive about this issue and recently uh, urged China to stop building an artificial uh, island around the region. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce the area. The South China Sea is a part of the uh, Pacific Ocean located south of mainland China. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, 12 times larger than the Korean uh, Peninsula uh, and is uh, surrounded by seven countries, uh, China, Taiwan, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, and Vietnam. Uh, there are up to 3,000 uh, uh, distinct geological formations mm -hmm. A formation, including small island reefs, uh, rocks, uh, atolls uh, in that area. Uh, in the South China Sea, uh, there are four groups of islands. 
uh, the current uh, dispute focused on two uh, islands. Uh, that is uh, uh, Paracel Island and the Spratly Island. Mm -hmm. The boundary line of the Paracel Island uh, overlaps uh, China and the Vietnam's boundary. And uh, the boundary line of the Spratly Island overlaps uh, uh, the boundaries of China, Philippines, Malaysia, and the Brunei. Mm -hmm. uh, more Moreover, or uh, the China, South China Sea has lots of uh, valuable natural resources. There are many tropical and uh, subtropical uh, fish species. Abundant oil and uh, gas in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, about uh, 200 billion barrels of oil mm -hmm. lying under the South, South China Sea. Uh, it is the, uh, I mean, Korea used the oil uh, uh, 800 million barrel per year. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount is equivalent to the amount uh, Korea can use uh, for 200 years. Right. And also the South China Sea is a very important uh, shipping route with uh, more than 40,000 uh, vessels uh, facing through the area each year. 90% uh, of crude oil imported from the Middle East to Korea and uh, Japan goes through the, the area. Mm -hmm. uh, the sea uh, connects uh, uh, the first big ocean to the Indian Ocean, and so it is a strategic uh, hub, uh, mm -hmm. critical mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. economy. I yes, see. Yes. So, so economically and strategically, it is a very important sure, yeah. region. Now, we, we understand that, but uh, Dr. Shin, I mean, we have international law, and uh, UNCLOS uh, specifically is uh, controlling in this issue, I would assume. And why is there so much uh, disputes mm -hmm. uh, among those uh, countries that are surrounding it? As you already introduced, the South China Sea has three major conflicts. One is the I mean, political uh, questions, and another is the military conflicts, and the mm -hmm. other one is the uh, international law conflicts. But among, uh, when it comes to the legal questions, there are three major questions. The first question is the, the uh, territorial disputes over the three groups of islands, uh, which are, as uh, Dr. Bach already mentioned, Paracel Islands, mm -hmm. uh, Spratly Islands, and uh, Scarborough Shoal. And the second question is maritime delimitation among the uh, regional states. And the mm -hmm. third one is the, I mean, uh, freedom of navigation, I mean, the rule of navigation in that region, mm -hmm. which has been recently raised by the United States because the Hillary Clinton in 2010 declared that uh, freedom of navigation is national interest of the United States. Mm -hmm. However, among these, I mean, behind these, three legal questions there are one uh, there is one fundamental question it is the uh, compatibility of the nine dashit line which right. has been declared by by china uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the united nations convention on the law of the sea i see i see now we, we understand those kind of key interests but unclos uh, going back to that uh, point is that not controlling, or is China saying that, well, that does not apply in this region? Well, as I already told you, there are three types of legal questions. Mm -hmm. But uh, the second question, as I mentioned, uh, maritime delimitation, and the third question, freedom of navigation, uh, these are the uh, I mean, typical questions that the UNCLOS apply. But mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the maritime, uh, I, mean, I mean, territorial disputes over the uh, islands, UNCLOS does not apply. Mm, mm. Uh, when it comes to the territorial disputes, uh, international law has developed by the, I mean, jurisprudence of international tribunals. Mm -hmm. It is different uh, dimension. Mm, mm. I see. So there, there is a, uh, for a legal scholars, is an in interesting question because it's developing. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Park, one, one of the key issues these days is that the China uh, is building an artificial island. Uh, and it could be used as a military base, and that's something that the surrounding countries are very keenly worried about and very attentive to it. But 
uh, recently, I think that uh, Mr. Xi uh, has said that they're not going to use it as a military base. Do you believe that? And also, uh, what do you think about China's intention? Actually, China's spokesman of the Chinese Foreign Ministry mentions that uh, China mainly used the artificial island for civilian purposes, mainly, mm -hmm. but also uh, to something for the need of military defense. Mm -hmm. So that uh, China does not actually uh, deny the use of the artificial island for military purposes. I see. Actually, the, uh, China already built an uh, airstrip in the uh, artificial island. And uh, uh, recently, the US uh, satellite and surveillance aircraft spotted uh, the, uh, the artillery vehicles on the, on a, uh, at the contested island. Mm -hmm. So the US clearly mentions that the, uh, the US opposed the militarization of the artificial island by China. But uh, China uh, uh, ambiguously mentions that it is intended to mainly to use exploit it for civilian purposes, like mm -hmm. the uh, search and rescue op operations and uh, maybe uh, environmental pro protection and many others. But uh, uh, other countries like the United States suspicious of the uh, Chinese intention, mm -hmm. uh, really. So actually, China uh, on and, uh, several times uh, uh, declared that want to be a dominant power in the region and the, in the world and to be a maritime power. Uh, so South China Sea is a, uh, great for uh, China to have some kind of uh, expansion toward the sea. I see. Uh, Prof Professor Park, yes. uh, on that uh, very point, the artificial island, uh, does that go in conflict with the international law? Uh, what, what do you see uh, there uh, in terms of issues? Yes, uh, the China claims that, that uh, those islands are their territory, so they can use uh, as they want, uh, even though they don't want to use it for civilian purposes right now. They can use it uh, military in the future. And thus the important thing is that uh, international law, uh, if we member states abide by the international law, the law can be law. Mm -hmm. But if the uh, members do not abide by the uh, law, the international law cannot be the uh, law. Uh, uh, because it does not have any kind of uh, effective punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if the strong uh, power do not uh, want to uh, uh, kind of follow the rule of the international court. The international law may not be the law. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem is not uh, on the international right now. It is on the kind of a power struggle between United States and uh, China. The South China Sea is where the conflicting interests of many countries collide. Uh, we're now connected to an expert, Dr. Gregory Pauling of CSIS, to hear more about the solution. Uh, the first question I will give you is that uh, dispute between the China and the U.S. have been uh, escalating by China's construction of the artificial islands. What's the current stance of China? Uh, China is already building uh, military facilities in uh, the uh, artificial islands, although they denied it. So uh, how far have such developments progressed? Well, it's hard to know. Chinese officials have said that large-scale reclamation, meaning the dredging and dumping of sand on the islands, has been completed. They first said this in June, and we know that some of that work continued until at least September, but at a much smaller scale. But what is clearly still happening is the militarization. Uh, meaning the, the work on things like airstrips, uh, dredging out harbors, building infrastructure that could be civilian but could also easily be military in nature. We haven't seen any large-scale military deployments, any uh, construction of large military uh, installations or anything, but clearly that could happen at the turn of a hat if, if China really needs to. Uh, then what's the intention of China behind construction of the artificial islands? Uh, is it to show off the military power? Clearly, these can have civilian purposes, and China's built two lighthouses, at least two, at two of the features. 
Uh, but, you know, Vietnam still dozens of lighthouses over the years. So this is not a, a huge navigational need in the region. I don't doubt that there will be civilian use, but China has also been clear that it will use these for defense, as they say. Uh, but I think most experts agree that the goal here is for China to establish de facto control over air and sea within the entire the so-called nine dash line its claim to the majority of the south china sea these might not be direct threats to for instance the u.s or even the japanese military to operate these waters but they're going to make life uh extraordinarily difficult for the smaller regional naval powers uh smaller regional air forces like vietnam the philippines malaysia you mentioned that there is a high possibility of china uh, using this landing uh, strips as a uh in the Spratly Island as a military base. Uh, it might be considered a provocation that escalates international tensions in the region. Uh, how, what is your take on this dangerous development? Well, there's no doubt that this heightens tensions. Tensions have been ratcheting up in the South China Sea since at least 2009, fairly nonstop. And then we saw with the 2012 seizure of Scarborough Shoal from the Philippines, the 2014 placement of a deep water drilling rig on, on waters claimed by Vietnam, that there's been a steady speed up in that escalation. Uh, but this is a whole new ballgame now with these features. The sheer volume of Chinese ships and planes that we're now going to see in areas where there was very little Chinese military presence before is going to fundamentally change the status quo, the, the, the balance of powers. I think it's impossible to see how this doesn't cause uh, an increase in the frequency of clashes with the Coast Guards and civilian ships of other, other, other states. Uh, it's going to make things enormously difficult for others to operate in the normal lawful ways they always have. Now, other countries involved in the disputes over the South China Sea uh, haven't taken active uh, measures like China. Uh, what do you think is the reason? I think partially it's capacity. Uh, Vietnam has done some small-scale dredging, uh, it really a, a drop in the bucket compared to what China's done. Malaysia hasn't done any in decades, uh, and neither have the Filipinos. Part of that's because nobody has the technical capacity to do this. What China did in the course of less than two years is an engineering marvel. They've created roughly 3,000 acres or so of land out in the middle of the ocean uh, out of literally nothing. That kind of technology didn't exist until recent years. And also, nobody else had the political wherewithal to do this. This is a clear change in the status quo, a, a very tenuous status quo, but one that's held for years in these contested waters. China has now upset that balance. Thank you, Mr. Folling, for your uh, insights. Now, let, let's talk about more of a, a U.S. stance on this, uh, Dr. Shin. Uh, recently, the Ashton Carter warned that uh, China should just stop this rebuilding or a reclam reclamation uh, projects in the South China Sea. Now, what do you think is the, the, the calculation behind this strong stance that the U.S. has uh, to China? As I already told you, there are three major legal questions. When it comes to the maritime delimitation and the territorial disputes, U.S. is not the party to, to the disputes. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the third question, freedom of navigation, U.S. already, I mean, declare that it is national interests. U.S. has been a, a strong, I mean, guardian of the freedom of navigations. So uh, U.S. is keenly interested in the region because the region is also the major route of, I mean, uh, which is called the sea lanes mm -hmm. uh, of, of commerce. So in order to protect the, these sea lanes, I mean, freedom of navigation is very essential. So. Uh, uh, U.S. becomes very uh, a world power uh, in order uh, world power by protecting the sea lanes of the commerce. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, if uh, the sea lane is blocked by the I mean China in this region, then the I mean uh, economic prosperous cannot imagine by the United States. So that's why U.S. is quite uh, keenly interested in the in the region. I see. Uh, I hear that there's some 90% of the, the transportation can pass through that region, so it's a strategically very important yes. point. Uh, Dr. Park, uh, maybe because of that, it seems like a lot of countries are interested in it in a very forceful way. Um, the militarily, the uh, U.S. has sent the, their ships. Uh, the, the, the China is building artificial 
facilities that can be used as a military base, and the Vietnam has whiffed up th their, their military spending, and the Philippines as well. So there seems to be a very telltale sign of seas of uh, future military conflict already brewing. Well, what's your opinion about that? That's true, yes. The South Asian countries are very concerned about uh, China's expansion into the South China Sea. Actually, the, the gap between uh, China and South Asian countries in terms of military is growing fast, so uh, widening. So mm -hmm. China, uh, South East Asian countries try to cooperate with the United States to uh, actually balance uh, the, uh, on the growing Chinese power and to check China. So in this uh, uh, situation, uh, the U.S. role is so important. Uh, the United States uh, clearly sent a signal to China. Uh, it is not going to stay idle on the China's expansion, uh, expansion and China's uh, action in the, uh, at, uh, in the South China Sea. And also, uh, 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 the U.S. Uh, actually indirectly indi tells that uh, uh, the U.S. United States is a dominant maritime power. Mm -hmm. in the region, mm -hmm. and China's expansion and to, uh, to be a, a maritime power would be welcomed, but it had to be a peaceful way, rather than uh, building on the artificial island and a kind of coercive measures. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is very, going to be a very interesting game uh, in the future, maybe mm -hmm. we have to see, but uh, it's, it is a uh, uh, great uh, actually place or issue uh, how the, between the two major powers right. in the region? Uh, between the two major powers, uh, Dr. Pro Professor Park, I mean, the, these kind of a power struggles between the two superpowers has always had some impact on Korea and none greater these days. Now, K Korea has experience of kind of looking at two sides and uh, trying to determine, as you mentioned, a diplomatic stance and the strategy. What do you think is our diplomatic course of action for Korea? Uh, I think that uh, we need to keep in mind that we have alliance relationship with the United States. Mm -hmm. We have partner relationship with China, but China has alliance relationship with North Korea, which you know that uh, our kind of enemy. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be the alliance with China. That means we may not be the in the middle between China and the United States. We uh, are in the si at the side of the U.S. Mm -hmm. If we are uh, kind of in need of U.S. extended deterrence in case of North Korean uh, nuclear attack, uh, we need to, to try to uh, fulfill the obligation of uh, an ally with the United States. That means that if the U.S. is attacked, we need to support U.S. Mm -hmm. Then the U.S. demands us to take its side when, mm -hmm. and I think that we need to take the U.S. side if we want to keep the alliance. If we mm -hmm. do not kind of uh, keep the obligation of the alliance, our alliance may be uh, very dangerous. So many people believe that we are in the middle between China and the United States, but mm -hmm. I argue that we are not in the middle. We are uh, on the side of the U.S. and we need to try to keep the alliance uh, strong and uh, continuous. I see. That certainly is persuasive, but uh, do you agree with that, President uh, uh, As you know, on November 22, uh, mm -hmm. President Park geun made a speech uh, in Kuala Lumpur uh, in which uh, she clearly stated for the regional stability. I think uh, our government should emphasize uh, the need to explore diplomatic avenue uh, mm -hmm. to, reach, uh, to reach a peaceful resolution. Uh, also, you know, Han Bingu, uh, the defense minister said, uh, the freedom of the flight and the navigation in the South China Sea should be ensured that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, this position is the upper limit uh, of uh, action we can take. Right. Despite that though, uh, Dr. Park, this, this is eerily similar to the issues, in terms of issues, the fat issue that we've faced. Now, it seems like we, we are put in a, put in a uh, uh, difficult and uh, very uh, patchy place, and we have to determine as to which side we have to be on, or 
Do we think that's the only course of action? What do you think about this quandary? Actually, there are two uh, things we should consider. Uh, in terms uh, in the perspective of South Korean uh, security issue, directly related to uh, South Korean security. Also, mm -hmm. there are some uh, maybe in, uh, related issues, but uh, not uh, directly related to South Korean security issues, like uh, South China Sea issue. First one, the uh, sad issues. It actually, it's uh, uh, the issue of South Korea's uh, survival and prosperity. We did the imminent threat coming from the North Korea. We have to uh, uh, protect our uh, 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 country. So it had to be judged or decided by our own security concerns, mm -hmm. not by other uh, consideration for. So the said issue, uh, we have to think about the, uh, North Korea's actual military uh, mm -hmm. capability, actual military state. In that kind of prospect, we have to decide whether or not we uh, should develop uh, missile defense capability or not, or how to uh, develop strengthen our combined alliance with the United States. But the South China Sea is a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, we have uh, interest on South China issues, but it, it affects not only South Korea, but also to all the Asian countries or international right. society. So as a middle power, South Korea is growing, and status is uh, 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 becoming higher. So as a middle, uh, middle power, we should take a position on the basis of the international law and international law, uh, norms all the international society accept. So mm. I think mm. the President Park and uh, Defense Minister uh, Han's statement clearly said that it, South Korea will follow and take that kind of uh, principle. The, uh, the international society act actually now they accept and try to uh, uh, develop mm -hmm. in the regions. Mm -hmm. It seems like, that, Dr. Shin, it seems like our easy uh, course of deciding is that, well, we have North Korea. That threat is uh, the paramount. So whatever we do, we have to secure the support of the key ally, which is the U.S. in this That's case. Right. So can we just say, well, uh, after everything is said and done, we have to protect ourselves. So we have to side with the the strongest ally, uh, who is mm. uh, is a protector at, yes. the, at this point. Uh, which is uh, mm. uh, the cooperation with the U.S. Do you, do you think that's the uh, kind of uh, only forced way that we have to take? But I have some uh, different opinion uh, mm. because, well, uh, when it comes to the freedom of navigation, uh, if we apply the law of the sea convention as well as customary international law, there has been, I mean, differences of, of opinion about the notion of freedom of navigation and the scope of freedom of navigation. Well, actually, in Northeast uh, Asia, in this region, China, Japan, and South Korea has very different, I mean, concept of freedom of navigation and mm -hmm. the innocent passages, so which I can call this uh, particularities uh, in, in this region. So, however, freedom of navigation is kind of universal value. If we apply this kind of universal value to the particularities uh, in this region, sometimes particularities can be sacrificed by the universal value. Uh, so as I already told you, well, Japan, China, and South Korea are enjoying this kind of particularities. So sometimes we have to think of the differences of the, I mean, nuances of the freedom of navigation when you use that kind of term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, do, do you think it can be accepted by other countries? I mean, does that come down to whether it can be a, a consensus among mm. those uh, interested parties? I mean, if, if there is an international consensus, probably we can assert it and it will be accepted and mm. probably in the international tribunals as well. Let me, let me uh, say some examples. For instance, mm. with regard to the scope of freedom of navigations, uh, the United States always mentioned that military activities in the exclusive economic zone is kind of, I mean, freedom of navigation. Mm. Uh, but however, as I already told you, United States is not a party to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the right. Sea. So if you look at the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, uh, the regional states in the ASEAN, I mean, in the South China Sea, Vietnam and Philippines, even they invited 
uh, the United States to this region, they mm. never uh, made a certain interpretative uh, declarations uh, which supports the concept of the freedom of navigation uh, supported by the United States. Only Germany, Italy, Italy and Netherlands mm. Mm. have uh, made uh, such kind of, I mean, interpretive declarations that supports the concept of freedom of navigation mm. uh, supported by the United States. So I it's see. quite yes, interesting point. In, in terms of South China Sea, there is an element that we are uh, kind of opposing the China's claim of effective control over those mm. islands because they are building the artificial mm. uh, structures to mm. say that we have control over it. Mm -hmm. But isn't that the same argument that we are, a similar argument that we're making at, for uh, Tokdo, mm -hmm. right? So if we're kind of opposing yes, that right. argument, then is it going against uh, or arguing against our, our position mm. or is there a conflict? I think you raised very important issue because uh, the, all the relevant, all the states concerned such as Japan, China and South Korea are learning with each other, are learning, uh, uh, from the positions to their, I mean, claimed uh, uh, territory, especially mm -hmm. maritime territories. Uh, South Korea has, the, I mean, uh, has, uh, South Korea and Japan has the Dokdo issue, and South Korea and China has Yodo issue. Mm -hmm. China and Japan has the, I mean, uh, Senkaku and Tiao Di mm -hmm. Island mm -hmm. issues. So these are connected with each other mm -hmm. because, well, when it comes to Dokdo, South Korea is occupying. When it comes to the Senkaku Islands, Japan is occupying, mm -hmm. so the, the, there must be a certain contradictory positions when it comes to the occupations. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very cautious in order to protect our national interests. Right. So the rhetoric is very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. So when dealing with these kind of, I mean, legal questions, because I, as I already told you, territorial disputes is typical legal questions, we have to borrow, I mean, invoke the exact term of, I mean, legal terminology when speaking out our positions. Mm. So, certainly it's a very interesting issue. Now we'll probably continue on that point, but I, I think it's a good idea to talk over a very specific issue. Uh, Korea is no exception to this. We are no bystander uh, because there is the issue of Iodo. Let's take a look at the report on the maritime disputes over Iodo. On November 27th and the 30th, Chinese fishing boats were arrested while operating illegally in the Korean EEZ in the West Sea. Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ, is the crux of maritime disputes between Korea and China. Every coastal country may establish an EEZ extending 370 kilometers from the shore. This means the country enjoys exclusive economic rights to the exploration and the use of marine resources in the area. EEZ was implemented under the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea adopted in 1982. According to the convention, foreign fishing vessels have to obtain permission from the coastal state to operate within the EEZ. Countries around the world have rushed to claim their own EEZs, most coastal fisheries are now assigned as the EEZ of one state or another. The EEZ has become a source of conflict between Korea and China. At the bilateral summit held in July last year, President Park Geun-hye and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed to open negotiations on the demarcation of EEZs. Iodo, a submerged rock, is at the center of the ongoing maritime dispute between Korea and China. It has been under Korean jurisdiction since its discovery in 1951 during territorial exploration. Its surrounding waters are rich in fishery resources and line marine transportation routes. Due to the close distance between Korea and China, there has been an overlap in exclusive economic zones. Korea is arguing for an equidistant middle line, but China is asserting a parallel line to the favor of its own country considering its larger population and landmass. 
At the Seoul Beijing summit held in October, Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang officially proposed a meeting to negotiate exclusive economic zones to President Park Geun-hye. Korea has actively exercised its rights over Yeodo, constructing an ocean research station on top of it. As real national interests are at stake in the exclusive economic zone debate, potential is growing for escalated tension. President Park Hyun Jung, as you have seen, uh, this is an issue that's pretty hot these days. Yes. Uh, now, uh, we expect that China will be very strong in this e economic uh, uh, zone issue. Uh, how do you think Korea should counter? Uh, how do you think this will play out? Uh, as we you know, talk about the South China Sea, uh, uh, I think the South China Sea and the EOD issues are quite different. The international law clearly favors Korea. Uh, Yodo is uh, uh, 149 kilometers from the southern tip of Marado in Jeju Island, mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, 247 kilometers from Tengdao in China. Mm -hmm. So when two countries have overlapping EZ, the law of sea uh, applies the doctrine of the middle line. Uh, Yodo is on the Korean side uh, from the middle line. Mm -hmm. But China argues that the middle line is uh, inadequate. They want to concede other uh, factors such as shoreline length or population distribution uh, in the area. Uh, the law of uh, you know, sea experts point out that China's accession lacks uh, legal basis. Mm -hmm. However, maintaining order in in the international community is not always a matter of law. Uh, Korea needed to take a legal high road as opposed to Chinese uh, diplomacy or force as mm -hmm. we uh, prepare ourselves for the EZ negotiation in coming December. I see, I see. Th this issue is uh, it, it can kind of in the gray ground where there's international law, but the China is not following. So this kind of falls in what we have been discussing. Uh, Dr. Shin, uh, how, how do you think will play out? Uh, uh, there, there is a, a history in this, uh, isn't there? There had been what's a, some 14 negotiation uh, between the China and Korea over uh, during the period of 1996 and 2008. It has not been. Uh, resolved and recently, uh, Prime Minister Lee Ko Chang has also said mm -hmm. that we should talk about this. So mm -hmm. it, it's on the table. Mm -hmm. Well, technically speaking, I mean the uh, uh, the uh, West Sea, I mean uh, which is called uh, Yellow Sea uh, by China, uh, is really easy place to uh, uh, the limit. Uh, between these two states because there is no, I mean, conspicuous, I mean, islands uh, located in the middle of the, uh, of the oceans, I mm -hmm. mean, West Sea or the Yellow Sea. But however, politically, what I'm concerned is that political considerations may have impact on the negotiations on mm -hmm. the uh, maritime delimitations between China and South Korea. Uh, well, actually, every state has the right to, I mean, declare 200 nautical mile uh, exclusive economic mm -hmm. zone. But unfortunately, the West Sea or the Yellow Sea does not have, I mean, 400 Enough nautical mile it. wide. Yeah. So it is inevitable that uh, the overlapping zones is, uh, is, uh, exists between China and South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Iodo, Iedo is unfortunately located in the overlapping zones of the, mm -hmm. I mean, China and South Korea's exclusive economic zones. Mm -hmm. So we call this uh, maritime delimitation issue not territorial sovereignty over the Iedo, because right. Iedo is kind of submerged right. feature. Mm -hmm. So, however, uh, some people just said, uh, I mean, South China Sea uh, issue has the ripple effect over the uh, negotiations on the uh, maritime delimitation, but I don't think so, because mm, yeah. uh, the characters, I mean, the uh, characters and char are quite different mm, from each yeah. other. 
So, uh, I mean, as I already told you, technically it is really easy issue, but it is totally up to the political will of the, of the leaders. Uh, this Iodo is not an island. It's not a habitable island. It's not a rocky island. It's a submerged. So, uh, internationally, uh, in terms of international law, there's no right to accord it to uh, this feature. So, economic, exclusive economic zone we're talking about is not uh, originating from that, uh, uh, from the Iodo, but we're talking about other, uh, the starting point where the overlapping uh, starts. Now, I, I guess the easiest solution people would say that, well, why don't we just split in the middle? But the China has different standards, yeah. and that seems to be a, either a challenge to the international law, or they are, they are advancing uh, different kinds of standards. Well, first I have to say that uh, it's a very hard to take a hard negotiation process. As you know, we, as you mentioned, we have 14 times of negotiation, mm -hmm. but uh, did not have any uh, product for resolving the issues. It means that uh, the uh, coming negotiation process also take very hard uh, time. But I have some... Uh, optimistic view on the uh, current situation. First one is uh, two leaders of the China or South Korea is very close and they have some kind of mind to resolve the issues. Uh, uh, so maybe that, that kind of he mentions already it, that kind of political leaders actually decision and mind can have some impact uh, to mm -hmm. the negotiation. The second one is that uh, China's aggressive action, aggressive action to the south, uh, towards South uh, China Sea and other areas, make the uh, other nations, Asian uh, countries, align with the United States mm. and oppose mm. South uh, China's position. So, in, in order to be a great power for China, the China needs alliance, friendship mm. Mm. in the region. So, <coughs> South Korea is a very good partner. Mm -hmm. economically and politically, strategically. So I think that China at this moment maybe show some kind of example of mm -hmm. negotiation with mm -hmm. the, uh, the neighboring, in the neighboring countries, how uh, China reserve the maritime issues with the negotiation. So mm -hmm. the, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, EO the issue is uh, as a, not the uh, relatively soft one, mm -hmm. so not mm -hmm. the tough one. So it's easy to target uh, to resolve the issue. So I think that uh, this time maybe we have to see. The other one is that uh, uh, China wants to act, improve and strengthen relations with South Korea. Mm. Can I ask so you? that kind of uh, things actually the, may have some uh, impact uh, to uh, the uh, uh, negotiation process. But I think that always uh, we have to remind that uh, China take very hard, uh, tough and, and stubborn position on maritime uh, 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 issues. So uh, I, even though I say that some kind of optimistic hope, but uh, uh, the negotiation process will take very uh, difficult uh, a process. I see. Dr. Okay. Uh, there is one thing I have to clarify with regards mm. to the relevant provisions of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea mm -hmm. on the maritime delimitations. In accordance with UNCLOS, I mean, maritime delimitations should be solved by the agreement between the states concerned mm -hmm. and have to result in equitable solutions. Right, so the equi right. equity applies to the maritime delimitation mm -hmm. negotiations. So South Korea's position is not the median line. South Korea mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, argue that uh, equity should apply to the delimitation between China and uh, South Korea. However, if mm -hmm. you look at the jurisprudence of international tribunals mm -hmm. uh, in the shared continental shelf, all the exclusive economic zones, median line is the starting point. Right. And then after, while well, reviewing all kinds of relevant circumstances, this kind of median line can be adjusted mm -hmm. to the special circumstances or relevant mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, China is arguing that the equitable solution is kind of, I mean, applying equ uh, equity. And so, but South Korea, yes, we have to start with equity, but the starting point is the median line. And then we can adjust well, after reviewing the relevant circumstances. I see. The reason for uh, focusing on this year, the issue, uh, President Park, you introduced the value of the South China Sea 
uh, you can also comment on the, the value of the yeah. Yodo itself. Yeah. Uh, Yodo is located in the entrance of a passing typhoon approach, approaching to Korea. Uh, also, it has a significant uh, you know, scientific value to identify the flow of ocean current and the typhoon strength, etc. Et and uh, uh, th that is the why you know, we have uh, installed the jacket platform of ocean science and technology base uh, in 2003. Uh, Yoda is, uh, is a rocky island in the water uh, which has uh, on a whirling, you know, phenomena caused by the rising upside uh, waves. Uh, because of this, uh, uh, there are numerous, uh, you know, planktons. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very important uh, for, you know, fishery, you know, uh, and uh, we catch a lot of uh, fisheries uh, such as uh, hair tail and mackerel, uh, which are very popular uh, to Korean. Mm -hmm. And like the uh, South China Sea, uh, as discussed above, above the surround, surrounding of, uh, area of the Yodo has uh, become the center of uh, you know, maritime traffic route uh, entering, entering the Indian Ocean and uh, you know, Pacific Ocean you know, for our Korean. Mm -hmm. So the maritime uh, route around the Yodo is uh, very important to Korea. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Park, uh, I would ask you this question that uh, because we have North Korea and we have uh, territorial disputes uh, with North Korea as well, NLL line, uh, w which has been always a kind of flashpoint of our, our dispute. So with the international disputes and, and domestic and or inter-Korean disputes as well, there is a very tall order to get the diplomacy right. For, for Korea, um, do, do you think that uh, this navigating the, the diplomatic terrain is something that uh, uh, the Park Geun-hye government has to focus on? Or what would be the kind of immediate uh, uh, time frame recommendations for them? Very hard questions mm -hmm. and I have to think more thoroughly on the situation first. And, uh, uh, first, with the uh, inter-Korean relations and those uh, northern limit line issues, actually, that is not a uh, legal uh, issue. It's a territorial defense issues for South Korea and uh, uh, did, uh, deter North Korean provocation in the area is the first uh, uh, most important. But uh, we should make a more stable and uh, peaceful uh, environment with uh, dial uh, through the dialogue with North Korea. That's mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, South Korea government now takes a more uh, positive approach to North Korea for uh, contact and dialogue. That's the one. It's different from the other issues. But mm -hmm. uh, Yodo issue actually uh, at the moment is very, uh, very favorable. I think that uh, uh, two leaders, as I mentioned before, have a very positive uh, mind to uh, push forward the negotiation. For South Korea, actually, we think that if China grows continuously, China becomes a more powerful state, mm. and then China, the negotiation can, would be more tougher mm. because China, with the power, will uh, take more portion of the area. Mm. So I think that this is a, uh, for South Korea to take some progressive negotiation with uh, uh, China. But as mentioned, uh, we should not uh, uh, have an agreement on the on on con the on favor condition. Mm -hmm. If we make a decision, uh, if we cannot resolve the issue today, maybe we, we should wait until the favor conditions comes. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, this is the very right time for South Korea to negotiate with uh, China <coughs> more positively. But uh, uh, the other issue is a bilateral issue, so uh, mm -hmm. we should uh, take that issue. We, uh, we can support, get support from other countries, South, South Asian countries, and maybe uh, take our side. But also the, uh, the alliance with the United States is so important. South Korean power, uh, diplomatic power, not only from South Korean own uh, mm -hmm. uh, national power, but also power from the alliance and uh, friendships with other countries. So mm -hmm. we should use all the aggregated uh, uh, 
uh, resources meet the legal uh, uh, principles. I see. This has become kind of naturally the wrap-up question. Uh, uh, Professor Park, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a wrinkle on this. Uh, I think that uh, the, our diplomatic stance and uh, the, the, the kind of worries that we had has a little bit of a development we have seen in that uh, kind of situation and also this a dispute in the maritime, but it seems like there is a, a point, as President Park Geun-hye has mentioned in UN uh, speeches, that we have to be a soft power and the middle power, uh, rather than just uh, having a strategic position in the middle. So with that in mind, uh, having developing our own uh, strength, uh, diplomatic strength, I, I assume, do you think that uh, this is a good test ground and do you think we can do it? Yes, I think so. And uh, I would like to mention two points regarding mm -hmm. your question. The first one is we need to uh, uh, kind of uh, look into the Japan's uh, choice mm -hmm. over this uh, uh, spread island dispute and uh, the uh, uh, po policy against China. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, we need to closely monitor uh, what kind of policy positions or directions Japan take. And the second point I'd like to make is that if we want to uh, have a kind of uh, wider room of maneuver in diplomatic uh, uh, policy, I think that we need to uh, improve the relationship with North Korea. Without improving the no relationship with North Korea, we cannot kind of have a, a kind of sufficient freedom of uh, diplomacy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, right now uh, North Korea agreed to have a kind of uh, uh, vice minister level meeting. So mm -hmm. I think that we need to take advantage of this uh, uh, chance and uh, to have some kind of uh, solutions uh, to into the kind of peaceful uh, relations between two Koreas. I see. Dr. Jun, you have the last word in this program. Oh, as my last one mentioned, uh, I'd like to uh, point out uh, the differences of nuances when uh, the U.S. and China, I mean, uh, uses the same terminologies. For mm. instance, reciprocity. Mm. U.S. Mm. Uh, using the reciprocity as, uh, I mean, uh, you can do everything in my domain, and I will do everything in your domain. Mm, mm. And but China uses the uh, the term reciprocity. You cannot do anything in my domain, and I will not do anything in your domain. Mm, mm. So, I mean, well, in order mm. to I mean fill the gaps between these two differences of the nuances of the I mean reciprocity, China and the United States should do every efforts. Uh, 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 by way of strategical dialogues. Mm, mm. This is a very tricky question, and it is an interesting question because of the diplomatic uh, dimension to it, and the, the international law is very important. Even the approach to look at uh, the international law, how to interpret it, is different. I hope that policymakers have seen this program and, and continue their discussion to get it right in the future. Uh, thank you for your contribution and insights. Thank you. Thank you. And also I thank you, you viewers, for tuning in for uh, Upfront every week. Thank you.